Hey guys, Thomas Joseph here. Now, when you are making what should be a deliciously tender uh, and juicy flank steak, do you end up with something rather tough and chewy? Well, today I'm gonna share with you a couple of tricks and tips in making the most delicious, tender and juicy flank steak. And I'm sure you're gonna be using this technique all summer long. Now, in front of me here, I have a beautiful flank steak. For all of you out there who may be not familiar with this cut of meat, it actually comes from the underbelly of the cow. So it's not necessarily tough in the way that chuck, which is shoulder, or anything from the leg of the cow is tough. Um, but what is really unique about flank steak is that it's really super lean. It doesn't have a lot of connective tissue and it has these really long muscle fibers. You can kind of see them, the lines kind of running the length of the meat here and this is what makes flank steak a little tricky to deal with now before i get started on the cooking and all of that with the flank steak i'm going to be making a really flavorful marinade now i usually like using an asian style marinade with flank steak because i think it really pairs well with the beefy flavor of the flank steak. Now certain cuts of beef are a little bit more mild and others are a little bit more rich um, and flavorful and flank steak is for sure one of those cuts that has a really robust beefy flavor. I'm gonna do my marinade today in one of these resealable bags. I think it's really great because what it does is it helps the marinade kind of cover the entire surface of the protein, the steak, whatever you're making. So I have two scallions that I've kind of thinly sliced on a bias. Acidity here, and this is a third of a cup of fresh lime juice. Now, marinades in the past, way back when, in the early days, were used to kind of preserve um, meats or mask the flavor of meats that maybe were going a little bad or a little sour. Um, that's kind of where they originated, but today they're used to really impart a nice flavor to whatever it is that you're cooking. This is two tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of freshly minced ginger and a little bit of chili flake. Now marinades, you know, a lot of people think of them as a, as a tenderizer for meats, but it's not necessarily the case, to be quite honest. It's going to give you a good amount of flavor, but the reality here is that marinades only really penetrate kind of the surface of the meats that you're using. So if you want something that's gonna really flavor the meat completely, you might wanna cut up your meat into smaller pieces before you marinate it. And in some recipes like beef stew, classic beef stews where you marinate the meat in a red wine mixture, this really helps to kind of flavor the meat completely. Here, we're gonna be imparting a flavor on the outside of the meat. Now, another ingredient that I added in here, which is actually, it does something to the proteins in the meat, is ginger. Now, ginger is part of a family of really high enzyme items, and pineapple is also one, papaya is another, and these enzymes really help in breaking down proteins, which in fact tenderize. Now, the thing is, again, as I was mentioning with marinades, they don't really penetrate the inside of the meat. It really takes a long time for them to do that. So what it will do is it will help to tenderize the outside. Now, one thing you wanna make sure when you are marinating your flank steak or whatever else you're marinating is that you don't over marinate the meat, especially with um, a marinade that has a lot of acidity in it, um, because what will happen is the outside of the meat will become a little bit sour. So this recipe here calls for marinating up to an hour. You could certainly do this maybe a few hours more, depending on the size of the flank steak. This is a one and a half pound flank steak, but flank steak could be a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. So this here is gonna go into the refrigerator. I'm gonna put it into a shallow baking dish in case the seal of the bag comes out. Out, but this is gonna go right into the refrigerator and then we're going to be ready to cook our flank steak. So our flank steak has been in the refrigerator for about an hour and now it is time to grill. Now I'm grilling the flank steak today, but you could certainly broil this. You could also pan sear it in a nice cast iron skillet. Really, whatever your preference would be or whatever you have at home, whether it be a grill or a pan. Now I'm gonna take this flank steak out and I'm going to place it right on some paper towels here. 
and dry off the flank steak. Now this is an important step when you're cooking and I usually tell you guys to do this when you're preparing a whole bunch of different proteins. You really wanna make sure that you remove any excess moisture, remove any of the marinade, especially if you're using a marinade that is high in sugar um, because what that will end up doing is it will caramelize to a certain point but in the end it will burn with high heat. But what this really does is it helps to prevent the meat from steaming and getting a nice good crust or good uh, grill marks as we're using a grill today. And in removing the aromatics, the ginger and the scallions here, these will not burn on the grill. So this step is really important. And you can see here, guys, as I was mentioning before, that the acidity, that lime juice, has really started to do some work on the flank steak itself. So you don't wanna over marinate this. Otherwise, the flank steak will become really, really gray and the outer portion will become really sour in the end. So now what I'm gonna do is give this a good seasoning with salt and pepper. As always, guys, it's important to season something like this, a, a bigger piece of meat, uh, liberally with salt and pepper, especially if you're gonna be grilling or pan searing because a lot of this seasoning is gonna fall off in the pan. I have my grill pan heating over a medium high heat here. I'm gonna use a little bit of oil and a paper towel just to uh, lubricate the grates of the grill here. Now, if you were using an outdoor grill with either gas or charcoal, you might wanna use a pair of tongs and your paper towel here so that you don't get too, too close to the flames. You can see that the grill is really nice and hot. And now it's time to sear the flank steak. So I'm using a pretty high heat, you hear you guys, to start the cooking process. This is gonna go on and we're gonna cook this flank steak, I would say for about four minutes per side until we get a nice crust. And then I like to finish this in either the oven or if you're using an outdoor grill over indirect heat. And what does that mean? Well, direct heat means that you place the meat right over the flames or right over your charcoal. And indirect heat is where you take the meat, the protein, whatever you're grilling, and you move it to the cooler end of your grill, allowing it to finish cooking at a lower temperature um, which will make the meat in the end more tender and more juicy. So this is gonna go for about two to three minutes and then I'm going to rotate the steak so I get those really nice cross hatch marks that we all love. So it's been about two minutes here guys and now I'm going to rotate the flank steak um, to get some really nice cross hatch marks and I wanna show you what that means. So you can see that we have some pretty good grill marks here but they only go in one direction. So now I'm going to rotate the steak about 90 degrees and cook it again for another two minutes before flipping on the other side. And this is gonna give us a really nice, beautiful pattern that is kind of signature in a lot of steakhouses and restaurants, and it really makes you look like a professional. So it's been another two minutes and now it's time to flip the flank steak over and cook it on the other side again for the same sort of two minutes and then rotating two minutes. And then this flank steak is gonna go into the oven about 350 degrees and we're gonna cook it until a instant read thermometer inserted into the thickest part of the flank steak registers about 119 to 120 and that's a nice rare. Uh, you could go up to a medium rare, but you guys, the, the real important detail here in, in cooking a flank steak is that you don't want to overcook it. As I had mentioned before, flank steak is really lean. It doesn't have a lot of that um, fat or um, marbleization in it, so you really shouldn't overcook flank steak. Otherwise, it's going to end up really tough and dry. So be very careful that you are cooking this to the appropriate doneness. All right guys, so our steak has cooked in the oven to a nice medium rare. It's rested for about 10 minutes. And whenever you're cooking a bigger cut of meat, even steaks, uh, which is an individual portion, you wanna make sure that you rest the meat so that the juices in the inside of the meat have a chance to redistribute and they don't run out when you are cutting into the meat. Now, I'm using a nice flexible carving knife here. And as we had spoken about before, the muscle fibers in this meat are long and run the length of the flank steak here. So what you wanna do in the end when you're carving this is you wanna cut this flank steak into thin pieces or thin slices, and you wanna cut against the grain. So the muscle fibers are flowing this way and we're gonna cut perpendicular to these breaking apart the muscle fibers and making this end product more tender. So thinly slice your meat. You can either cut it straight down 
or you can cut it on a slight bias. And a slight bias meaning you can angle your knife slightly like this, you guys, um, giving really nice, beautiful, wider slices. And so there you guys go. A few tricks and tips in making a really tender and juicy flank steak. I have to give this a try, you guys. Mm, so delicious. Serve this with a little bit of salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of um, lime wedges. This would be fantastic in tacos. Now, as always, guys, we'd love to hear from you. Write in the comment section below or reach out to us using the hashtag Kitchen Conundrums. And as always, guys, enjoy. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.